A sheriff in Texas says a father beat a man to death with his bare hands after catching him sexually assaulting his four-year-old daughter. But it will be up to a grand jury to decide whether this father is going to face any charges. The father has not been named. The Houston Chronicle reports that the dad heard his daughter's screams from behind the family's barn, then saw the man allegedly molesting the four-year-old. The sheriff says the dad punched the man repeatedly in the head defense of her trying to get her away from him that he struck the individual in the head several times do you think this father should be charged let's don't ask that question well the sheriff also told our sister network cnn that the father has a right to defend his daughter so we asked you on facebook what you think should happen to this dad a lot of opinions out there most of you say not to charge him this is what linda wrote into us he should walk he was protecting his child. And this is the thought of Charles. He wrote this. He says, would he face charges if someone broke into his home? Probably not. All right, well, let's bring in psychologist Eric Fisher to discuss more on all of this. Eric, great to have you with us again. Thanks for having me, Aisha. Now, some people at home will be saying, how could this happen? How could you beat a man to death with your bare hands? You say this is one of these instances of someone snapping. Right, right. You know, we have to look at that. Our emotions have a purpose to us. And the purpose of rage is to protect us and people that we love and care about when we feel that they're in fear of their life, their integrity is threatened. Here's a perfect situation where rage did exactly what it was supposed to do. And rage isn't concerned about the survivability of somebody else who we feel is a threat to us. Unfortunately, these things happen. And this is, this is what happened in this situation. Somebody ended up dead. I've got to ask you about the little girl in all of this. Right. Just, you know, the impact all of this will have on her, is likely to have on her. Well, there's two tragedies here that she experienced. One is the sexual assault, and the second is seeing her father kill somebody. That's Those are two events that separately would need help, and together they definitely need support. Because what happens when kids experience trauma, they re-experience and reprocess the trauma at different ages and different times of development. So usually you have kids who need support throughout their childhood and sometimes even into their adulthood. On the one hand, it's nice that she'll always know her father loved her that much. Mm -hmm. But the difficulty is that she could potentially have survivor's guilt too. But again, hopefully the family is going to determine the outcome a lot because how parents and people around this child as adults guide her through this often is a big determining factor in her outcome. You surprised me with this because I thought that when a child experiences something that young, four years old, that the memory really disappears. And you're saying the trauma of this will actually reappear at various phases? Well, sublimated traumas aren't necessarily a good thing. You know, when people bury the traumas that happen to them, they still potentially have an influence on their behaviors later on in life. They just don't know what the behavior's about. So to me, it's a healthy thing that this person processed the trauma that they maybe work with an art therapist to draw or color it out or things like that, or to play it out with play therapy. There's a lot of different ways to play these things out. So usually I don't really want to see somebody bury a memory because if we can talk about it, work through the feelings and emotions, it often leads to a better outcome. Eric, there's a thought here. This parent uh, knew, apparently this guy was an acquaintance of the family. Mm -hmm. How does a parent learn how to trust in situations like this? Because when parents hear this kind of story, they think, how can I trust other adults anywhere near my children? I think the biggest question here is how is this father going to trust himself? That here he trusted somebody who he, in good his good judgment, felt that he could let them into his family's life, and they betrayed him. Often what happens here isn't, isn't only that he doesn't trust other people, but the biggest tragedy in here for him is that he doesn't trust himself, and he has to live with the potential guilt of, seeing, of knowing what he did in front of his daughter and what he potentially feels like he allowed happen. So he'll also need therapy through this progress too, this process, too. All right, Eric, thank you. I want to bring in Jane Velez.